All right, family, we are back live. We are back live. We had to regroup. Y'all done seen what happened a couple of times. Uh, they didn't do anything to the channel. That was me. I had to end the broadcast because I'm I'm being smart about the situation. And I know what happened last time when Dr. Valentine was on there. So I got to be smart about the channel and the situation. And we got to move strategic. So uh, we are back, you know. Um, the ro this is why we say the rolling on cut stuff you're going to get on um, Doc's uh, web <laughs> webinar. This is why he does yeah. the webinars. Because yeah. Doc, get Doc gets in the zone. And uh, when you're in the zone, it's like, you know, a fighter that's in the zone. And then you just tell him, stop, just like that. He yeah. might throw a couple more, you know, a couple yeah, more punches. punches they come yeah. out. You know what I'm saying? But that was family, my bad. That was my bad. Yeah, yeah, it's all good. It's all good, Doc. We was having a great conversation. Um, let's start from the top, if you can, Doc. I know yeah. it's hard, but um, let's start with um. Let me start by sharing this uh, this flyer one time while everybody loads back in. Mm -hmm. I know it's a lot for everybody to go in and come back in. So make sure you tell your friends and family we are back. We appreciate uh, it. Yeah, you. definitely, definitely. Thank you for your patience, family. Uh, tell the people one more time, Doc is re having a rebroadcast of his last webinar. You see how strategic we have to be on YouTube. Um, this is why he does these webinars. So doc, he could just go off. He goes off for about 10 hours. Mm -hmm. Tell the people uh, exactly what's going on July 17th, my brother. July 17th, for those who were not able to come, I believe it was in June, June the 5th, mm -hmm. we had our last one. Um, for those of you who were asking, I got a lot of requests to rebroadcast because they wanted to go over the materials again, and those who called and said they had missed it. So we were, you know, my wife had convinced me to do a rebroadcast, and this is going to be right ahead of us uh, putting up what we had promised to do, but very, very having a very hard time finding a platform for all the materials that we want to put on the. Uh, on there, all our webinars. So um, this is ahead of us finally seeing if we can get a platform to do all my previous webinars so you can have access to them. But I also wanted to put a caveat to it to also make sure that people who said that they could not get in to understand that we are not the ones that are creating the links for you to get in. That is created by Constant Contact and by uh, PayPal. Uh, the Zoom, actually, Zoom, Constant Contact, and PayPal are the ones that formulate the link for you. So please make sure that you check all parts, all caches of your email, and to make sure you click a favorite or to accept our email or the Constant Contact or um, whatever it is that you've done before. Search throughout your whole computer because they send it directly to the email once you've made your payment. And, and the link is created and sent directly to the email that you placed there. So uh, please make sure of that. And uh, again, we apologize for those who couldn't get in. And uh, we, we've, um, we've given back refunds uh, as they are uh, called in and as we check to see whether or not uh, you have participated. And like I was saying uh, earlier, that a lot of people have been trying, you know, a couple of people are trying to scam us. Uh, to get it for free and then to get us to go back. But the record said that, you know, that they had actually participated. So that being said, um, we want to make sure that uh, you, when you, the materials that we're going to be speaking about, especially Novatech and the uh, Nobles of the Golden Quill. And uh, it's interesting, Nobles of the Golden Quill, I've been getting a lot of calls from people who have been uh, unjustly incarcerated and the nobles of the golden quill are also there. We, we have a jot form for you to fill out so that you can state your case, and then we send it directly to them. All right. And uh, of course, the Novatech, I wanted to talk with uh, maybe my Brother Rich and I will do something completely uh, on just Novatech and uh, the XRP and uh, to start getting you ready because of the crash coming. That's going to be a big thing. Uh, the devaluation of the dollar and how to get valuation out of your dollar by shifting to a whole new market that is getting ready to open up. Okay. Yeah, we're definitely going to be touching on that, family. Just texting the family, letting them know we live. Um, 
trying to get everybody back in the building. Um, yeah, I had an announce a couple of announcements for those who didn't hear it the first time. Uh, Rod Hayes will be on Patreon later on this week with um, Psychic, the um, Basic Principles of Psychic Self Defense. Also, Dr. Valentine will be back on Patreon to end out this month, family. So make sure if you're a Patreon, make sure you tune into that. If you're not, you might want to sign up to Patreon to see those exclusive metaphysical videos right there. Also, uh, come make sure y'all here this Wednesday, just like I had the panel with the brothers a couple of weeks ago. I'm going to have a panel with the Queens this Wednesday at 9 p.m. When we talked about a couple of weeks ago, I told you I was coming with the um, the panel about divine feminine energy, the big mama frequency um, uh, panel. So, um, yeah, make sure you're tuning this Wednesday at nine o'clock. Uh, I will announce the guest tomorrow. But this Wednesday, nine o'clock, I'm going to have a panel with the Queens and they're going to be going in family. All right. Uh, and with that being said, Dr. Valentine, as I said, uh, the last video before we just ended, um, our soul wants to know so much information. You could, you know, one of the most miserable things in life, Doc, is probably you work your you work your whole life, you work hard, yeah. you become a multi-millionaire, and you're still miserable, and you still get sick, and all these things still, and then you just wonder what the fuck, man. I tried my best, and this ain't the answer. This ain't it. Your soul is still searching for something. Mm -hmm. So this is something that no matter how much money you got. No matter how many women you could get if you're a man, you ain't going to be happy if your soul ain't right. right. So talk to me about what's your definition of a soul? Because we're all searching for something within our soul, brother. What's the your definition of a soul? Well, the definition, you have to kind of, you have to define around it so that mm. you can get an idea, 360 degree idea of what it is. You said something very pertinent in the beginning, you know, as the introduction, mm -hmm. that no matter what we do to strive on the material realm, we tend to find out that it becomes empty after a while. Whatever mm -hmm. you achieve, you become very empty with what you've possessed. And that's because the material world is an addiction. Mm. This is what Buddha spoke about. Yeah. This, these sensations become addictions. There's a rush, just like any other drug gives you the first rush. Mm. That's the cherry high. And then after you've gone high enough, you seek to have that kind of adulation. But then after a while, you want to be left alone. Notice how people go out and they want to be known. Know me, look at me, feel you, see me. And then mm. after a while, it's like, leave me alone, leave me alone, leave mm -hmm. me alone. Mm -hmm. Well, that's to tell you that the, the pendulum swings. And if you're not centered, and this is where you say if I'm finding soul energy, the mm -hmm. soul is a resonating signature that is the connection between the material and the spiritual. Mm -hmm. And the soul is the record keeper of your physical experience, of your temporal experience. Mm -hmm. The soul etches the deepest experiences that you have that are emotional to you. Say you have a deep emotional crisis. If you are not balancing that particular crisis, by understanding how to alleviate or to change the judgmental perception of what that thing is to you, you find out that your own judgment of yourself becomes <clears throat> that mark that you leave on your soul. It becomes almost like a, a, a keloid, like mm. a scar, mm. like a wound. And then as you go through the birth canal again, remember energy is never created and energy can never be destroyed. And so your thoughts become an energy signature that you create out of your own um, experience. And it becomes your return ticket. That damage, that that need, and whatever it is you do to disrupt the balance, mm -hmm. this is what it's all about. It's about maintaining and coming into balance with yourself. And all the things that you do that are outside of balance, if you're not seeking the balance, which is seeking the peace within, to understand what your thoughts are in connection to your soul, how your thoughts can override the observer, which is the teacher for the soul. For it the soul. is the judge for the soul. So we tend to think that our thoughts are the only things that we need to run on. But that, that gas is used up very quickly because 
Your thoughts can turn on you. Your thoughts can start dictating to you, and that's when it becomes an addiction. Mm. So what happens is your <clears throat> observer now must see the thought process as something that is the learning, it's a guide, it's a light, a pointer to your balance. If your thoughts are not pointing you towards equilibrium, ma'at, and a balancing of all the energies that have, have come through your thinking process, through your emotions, through your actions, if your thoughts are always belaboring about somebody else doing something to you, or you don't, you're you're blaming yourself for this, and or you're blaming that other person for what you're doing, and you're not balancing yourself. Mm -hmm. The soul is taking that; it, it's taking notes. Mm -hmm. And what happens is, some people leave with a soul heavy burdened with things that they felt that you have not accomplished: guilt, mm -hmm. hatred, greed, jealousy. These mm -hmm. are what they call the seven deadly sins, or the seven deadly thought processes that cause you to become a recidivist. You keep being imprisoned by the body. Mm -hmm. And this is what Buddha warned us against. Buddha mm -hmm. said it's the taste for the human body. It's the taste for sensations that keep you imprisoned. Your need to constantly feel the body because the body then overrides and dictates what it is that reality is, and it's not. And we have to understand that this is an illusion, even though we have agreed for to feel it, to be part of it. The, the organizer and the one that is the distiller of your mm -hmm. experiences mm -hmm. becomes the soul. Mm -hmm. And you are the one who essentially says what's going to be etched on it. That's the book of life. Your book of life is your soul. Mm -hmm. It is, it, is, it is where you are writing your experiences and what it is you're going to return with. Or if you found peace, if you have not allowed the material world to addict you, uh -huh. then you return by choice and not by being compelled uh -huh. to, come back to balance uh -huh. what you did unbalance while you were in the physical form. You, you, you've, you've been involved in so many sciences throughout the years, Doc. You've been doing this for over 30 years. Have you ever gotten into past life? I think they call it past life progression. And if you have, have you yeah. discovered who you was in a past life? Is I, that something you yeah. want to talk about? Yeah, well, someone did that for me uh, back when I was with Queen of Fua, back when mm. we were married. Mm. And I remember they did it, if I'm not mistaken, we did it at um, on the Nostrand Avenue Center. Mm. And when we did it, I it was this, I, it's like I dropped into a hole. And mm. when I dropped into the hole, it was this scene. And then there I was standing on top of all these bodies. Wow. And I was, I was saying, you know, I told her, I said, what are all these bodies? And I looked and I saw in my hand, it was a lot of blood. And then there was this thing where, there was this melancholy that came over me to match the feeling of the melancholy of the entity that I was watching as a third party. And I, I had, I felt a, a camaraderie or what a connection to it as if it was me watching me in a mirror of some kind. And it was fire. But then there was another part where I was uh, sitting in a room that was dark and there were only eyes all around. It was weird. It was almost like a psychedelic trip. And no, I was not on anything, uh, no psychotropics or anything like that. And uh, when I did it, it was dealing with um, a hypnotic experience. Uh, it, it was actually dealing with a form of somnambulism and working with somnambulism and cramp. Matter of fact, I told the person who was helping me to do that what to do, because I, you know, I am a um, advanced hypnotherapist, uh, advanced uh, teacher in hypnotherapy. So I told them what to do to help me to attain that state of mind, and it was it was really interesting because I remember I had also when I was a child, when I was seven years of age, I drowned. Right, right. And I told you that, and. Um, that almost was like the feeling that I had when I did that. Mm. So it is it is possible, but you have to tap into what I found out. You know, when you start getting technical about it, 
Mm -hmm. you found out is that inside of your mitochondria that you mm -hmm. inherit from your mother, mm -hmm. that mitochondria that you have, that genetic part of imprint that she gives to you is almost like a library that we need to tap into. That's why our old children coming in playing virtuoso piano and violin and so forth. They just picking up from where they left off. Mm. Came mm. back. They came back to complete what they wanted to complete but could not complete. And based upon the adulation that they were seeking, they're looking for that now at a very early age. There's a group. I forgot the name of the uh, all black family, and you probably your audience knows, in London, in England. And they're called the National Treasure of England. There's seven children, and they all play the all play their instruments like virtuoso. And they're all black. Mm, wow. And their mother, who was Welsh and black, and, uh, and um, I think she was Sierra, Sierra Leone, mm -hmm. uh, married a, a Welsh woman. And you know the Welsh, they're part black, but they look white. And there was the, um, and then the father, uh, and then let's see who it is. Uh, go look them up. Go look up and say the seven black children who are. You can put this in there. Seven black children who are um, the you know national treasures of England. And you will find there's one that they, the two of them, the first two, the girl who plays the piano, and her 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 brother, her younger brother who plays the cello. Man. If, you know, after listening to them, you begin to see what they did to our music here. Mm. The complications, the, the way that they play. And I know they're playing things like Rachmaninoff and they're playing, you know, Litz and all of these. But mm -hmm. that was our music. Mm -hmm. Jazz is our also our classical, American classical music. But where do you see our children? I was watching this BET award and it was sickening. Mm. To watch what it is. I mean, it was crap. And I don't care if you don't like me anymore for saying it. But it's garbage. It's garbage. This woman talking about singing, you know, pull my pull my panties to the side or some nonsense like that. And y'all think that's music? It's sickening. And y'all need to do something about the music that they're showing at that BET award. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I'm going to rant off. But yeah, I... when I heard, when I saw the kind of crap that they're pushing out there, you know, and there's, you know, and six people with a mic, oh, oh, and what, say something, sing something, <laughs> play something. <laughs> and everybody want to hear you, ho, oh, oh. <laughs> the hell are you doing with a mic? <laughs> it's ridiculous. Uh -huh. <laughs> and y'all think we were looking funny in the 60s and 70s oh. when we were dressing idiotic. But check the music we was coming out with. We looked funny and with clown and clown costumes and stuff, but no music was like that. That was a renaissance in in so-called uh, melanated or capital music. Mm -hmm. But today, today they they're not teaching. It took them. Yeah, Doc is frozen. You there? Yeah. This, this. Yeah. Yeah. You see me? Yeah. There's just one beat, and it's a drum, and somebody playing something over there, or y'all are sampling old music. Why don't you learn the old music, copy the old music, play something or write something that matches the old music you're sampling? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why do you think the only thing they want to push is this? It's a dumb down. It's dumbing you down. The, the real hip hoppers, they, they, they're they gone. Mm -hmm. The ones who are really were trying to keep the message going, keep the beat going, Keep the true music going. That's very few. I like, I like the one, uh, brother Black Black Dots music, um, and Ka um, Cam Cambada Cambada. Yeah, I played that. That's the opening of my uh, of yeah. I played their music as the opening to my um, uh, to my last webinar, and it's going to be the dope. opening to this webinar. Dope, dope. See what I'm saying? Because they got something to say. <clears throat> All this other crap, and you, you're going to see these women slutting themselves on stage. Mm. I don't want to see you squat unless you're getting ready to have a baby. Mm. The hell is all that about? I mean, mm. ain't, you, ain't you all numb already to all of that nonsense? You would think, right? Like, how much more yeah. can we take of this nonsense? But I'm just saying, that is what tires your soul. That's what that, that music is soul destroying music. Mm -hmm. Why you think they called Jeez. soul music soul music back in the day? Facts. Because you were feeling it. 
Yeah. You fell in love with the music. How many mm. babies were born mm. listening to, to Barry White? Yeah. How many babies were born listening to uh, Isaac Hayes, mm. the Delphonics? Mm. That's when you were in love. We we were talking in love. We just love our women. We talk love to our women. Now we mm. want to call them bitches and hoes and, and the hoe. Now that's become part of our language. That's what yeah. you are. You a bitch and a hoe. What the hell? Come on. Doc going off, y'all. <laughs> Doc going off. Because Doc is a musician. Y'all don't a lot, some of y'all don't know. Doc is a musician. So this this uh this, you know, this is close to his heart. Yeah, listen, you know, uh, listen, Earth Wind and Fires, my friends, they're close. Drummer, the, the singer, the arranger. I knew uh I knew um Maurice White. I met him back in the day. Fell in love with their music. Listen to true music, you know, and, and, and get back to that. Learn, pick up an instrument mm -hmm. because that's what you call your spirit catcher. An instrument is a spirit catcher. When you play it, after it, the, the, the instrument resists you, it's the hardest thing to get. If you want to play bass, you got to toughen up your fingers yeah, yeah, yeah. and your hands got to get strong. And then you got to work through it, work through it until it becomes, and all of a sudden, as soon as you free yourself from it, it begins to give you all the beautiful music you want. Mm. But it traps you first. It enslaves you and then frees you. That's what you have to do. You have to catch a spirit catcher. And some of the ones who are the lyricists, I'm hearing some monstrous lyricists from the old rappers, man, it was so good to listen to hip hop from back in the days until I think Tupac went crazy, started talking all kind of nonsense and, and uh, it really hurt me. But when you start wanting to party back in the days and 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 one of my old guitar player friends, uh, my, Nile Rogers, he had a song called Good Times. Mm. They sampled that bad boy and um, up in the Bronx and became super, super. Matter of fact, when they sampled Niles' music, that's when the big change took place and they went to court mm. and stated that since they weren't going to be taking black people playing musician music anymore just the rappers that they changed the laws of music in order for you to sample music oh because okay before, you couldn't mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because um niles and them went to court on sugar hill mm. and that's what changed everything mm. wow and they just they just destroyed music and when i turned on the BET Awards, they, you know, every oh God Almighty, I, I, I was, it, you know, I couldn't take it. it was hurting my heart, and I'm saying I, I, I wanted to look at it because um, our niece, uh, um, my uh, the granddaughter, mm -hmm. was dancing with Lizzie, mm -hmm. and so we said we want to see her dance with Lizzie, mm -hmm. and she danced, saw her, and then after that, it it turned into this thing. I was saying it again, and then all of a sudden, somebody was outside in the in the in the in the audience, and they said, "Time to listen to the baddest music ever played." <laughs> <laughs> this woman came out, started singing, and the guy came out, ho 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 ho, <laughs> and she's singing to me, thinking, and he says, "Ho!" I'm saying, "That's not the baddest music ever played by black people." Oh man, <laughs> man, Doc on one tonight, y'all. Doc is bad I'm, at the I'm state sorry. of. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, man. That that was the one. My wife told me say something about that, you know. Oh man, I'm just hurt. Uh, I'm just hurt. Let's get back on the point. Yeah, man. don't don't let it make you that bad. <laughs> it does. I'm furious when I start looking at our brothers and sisters talking this nonsense. What pissed me off is that. They, they, they flower it up. They they talk the nastiest shit. Women slut themselves, and that's going to be free. That's you. You go, girl. No. That's nasty. And you're just training our young girls to be hoes. Mm -hmm. You've got Cardi B talking to the goddamn president. How the hell you have Cardi B as your representative? You done lost your mind. Mm. I'm sorry. It, it, it's all good, Doc. Um, since you you mentioned um 
Cardi B and um, nothing about her personally, but I just thought about children and, um, you know, women giving birth. And we hear all the talk about abortion right now, the Roe versus Wade. H how do you think souls trying to come back into this realm? How do they, how do they, well, how should we view abortion? Is is it a good or a bad thing? Or is this something that, you know, our ancient culture thought was bad for the souls trying to come back? Or is this something that just has always been a part of our culture when we deal women, with abortion? Women have always been aborting children. Mm -hmm. They they knew the secrets. They had they knew when they knew what time it was. They knew, say, rape, especially with rape. They didn't want a child. They had special herbs mm -hmm. that they would take. My grandmother was a doula. I used to see, you know, the table that we had, a very small table, a very small hut that we lived in in Trinidad. Mm -hmm. And babies would be born on that table in the mm -hmm. day or the night. And then the next morning or the next at the night, we were eating off the, ta the table. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's what, that's what I came up under. Mm -hmm. But you have to look at the fact that the whole thing around Will versus Way was the follow-up to... Sanger, Margaret mm -hmm. Sanger's genocide, uh, you know, campaign when mm -hmm. she went after the preachers and said that, um, well, the woman, Norma uh, McCorvey, she's flip-flopping. This woman, uh, Gloria Allred, who's like this staunch feminist, was the one that was actually coaching her during that whole trial. Mm. Then she came back and said, well, the people who are the pro-lifers paid me to switch shift and say, uh, come back and be a Christian and say, I really didn't do that. We know that she had nothing to do with it. She didn't care one way or another if you wanted to abort your child. Mm -hmm. But then, of course, Margaret Sanger, and I got a little thing here, Margaret Sanger said, in this uh, publication she had called Birth Control Review, she said, birth control and racial betterment. This is what, this was what the, uh, the name of it, this was written back in, I think, 1919. Mm -hmm. And she said, birth control will clear the way for eugenics and the elimination of the unfit. Now, remember, we, the underclass, are the, the unfit, according to her. Black sterilization was actually for the upkeep of society. She argued for keeping the birth rates of blacks down to 15 babies per thousand. Mm. 15 babies per thousand. She wanted a population congress to be created so that she could set up a, a, a system to, elim to eliminate illiterate, paupers, uh, unemployables, criminals, prostitutes, dope fiends, and that there would be camps set up where they'd be gathered up after taking tests, and they would be put out on these farms to work for cheap labor. This is all, this is all, was all structured. And the other part of it was, as a result, you figure that the census that was taken in 1960 showed that there was 18,871,831 black folks in this country at the time that was taken in the census. Now, since the uh, legalization of abortion in 1973, an estimated 20 to 23 million black babies were aborted as of, 19, uh, as of 2020. Mm. Now, that's more than was that uh, the than black folks were in numbers here in the country by by 1960 so the the thing is we say that or we found out that at least 79% i think it's 79 to 80% of all the abortion clinics are within walking distance of black and latino communities walking distance mm -hmm. They have sometimes three or four in the neighborhood. Uh -huh. Now, a lot of sisters will say, well, you know, you're coming down on it. What about rape? What about incest? I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about carelessness. I'm talking about not dealing with responsibility. Women have at least eight or nine ways that they can do that. Men have one. <clears throat> the one they want is you can snip or cut, or you can put on a, a glove. 
Mm-hmm. But now they want to make sure that you snip or that again, they, they're trying to get a pill where they will definitely kill your sperm. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking at the fact that Roe versus Raid was actually, um, the trial was based upon whether or not it was constitutionally legal. Oh, no. Constitution means law. Whether it was constitutionally lawful for a Mm -hmm. woman to have an abortion paid for by the state. Mm -hmm. Now, they would say that, okay, black folks are essentially more prolific when it comes to that birthing. Well, they had to get rid of that. How did they do that? They got rid of it by getting rid of the family. And when you get rid of the family structure, where the man is the head of the household, you teach the boy how to be a man so he become uh, prolific enough to be able to take care of a family, to create a family, because men create families, not women. And you see that. Women are essentially now dealing with what I call survival units. You call it single-parent families. There's no such thing as a single-parent family. That's an oxymoron. The family is the man, the woman, and the child. That's a family. You could say that there's an extended family where people are, you know, a certain way with each other, supportive of one another, but the core family, the structure, is the man, the woman, and the child. Just like they're destroying the idea of what a gender is, what a woman is. Could you imagine? They couldn't tell you what a woman is. That's how sick we've become. And and the, the politicians don't even want to answer that question. Hmm. You go and ask anybody in the street, what's a woman? Um, I don't know. Or, um, well, there are many, many different, uh, anybody could be a woman, you know. Uh, what? Hmm. That's what we, that's where we're at right now. They hmm. can do that to people or to generations who have not been given the proper education to understand who and what they are as individuals. You can always tell somebody who don't know shit from Shinola when it comes to the truth and the reality and what it is that the ancestors gave us, what it is that reality is versus truth and so forth. And you could sell them a bill of goods. And that's what they're doing in the schools. That's why men are dropping out of schools. And women are all in the schools now because they're all the ones getting a PhD and all these things. And they're still working at McDonald's. Women are going all into into finance. And now I'm going into business for myself and all that. This Everything you see happening today is based on dysfunction. If our women is out there working, what are our children doing? They're being given over to the government to take care of. Do they give a damn about them? No. In fact, they let them get shot and killed while the police stand outside. They don't care about your children. That's why I said from, what, 10, 20 years ago, take your children out of public school. You heard me say that constantly. Mm -hmm. That's why we set up the ISM. We got to be able to teach you the, the true culture that we left. Jazz, what we call rock. Our, that, that was our music that white boys took. Mm-hmm. They stole that. We had so-called classical music. They took the black people that was uh, that was uh, the originators of it, especially when it came down to the so-called chamber music. That was made, made by uh, Chevalier. He was the one who uh, you know, who mentored Mozart. Was a brother. And he was the number one swordsman. He was the the Michael Jordan of swordsmanship. Mm. And he was the consort of Marie Antoinette and the head of the uh of the uh the palace guard. All of, he was a true Renaissance man. What, hear, what was his brother's name? I believe it's Duchavier Duchavier. You all know what I'm talking about. I'll get the name for you. And it's in my book too. <laughs> oh. Uh, it'll come to me and I'll send it to you. You can go ahead and tell them, say, Dr. Valentine gave me the name and I'll get you the name. And if you look at the old pictures of of Beethoven, Uh he nappy headed. Yeah. And that's a picture of him in the British Museum that you don't see. 
It's going to be in my new book. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, I'm sorry. I don't mean to be ranting off, but um, no, I love it. Your passion. I love what you. <laughs> we love it. We we just love it. Oh, by the way, let me take. Oh, 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 oh. There it is. Chevalier de Saint George. Thank you. Thank you. That's the name. Yeah. Yes, Joseph they, Ballon. They, they sharp in the chat. <laughs> I love it. I love these people. I love the brothers and sisters who come in here. See, you got a, you got yeah. a serious following, brother. This is this a different kind of chat room. This is mm -hmm. a different kind of channel. They they, they sharp. It. I'm loving it. You know, this is my old some of the gray cells are not working. I have to get, get it back in order. <laughs> but um, yes, he he was uh, he was a Renaissance man and was responsible for um, giving um, Mozart one of his first jobs. Mm. And he was the one, because back in those days, there were big orchestras that played for the, for the kings. Mm. He was the one who took uh, and made the, the cello, the viola, the violin, and the piano a, uh, a thing, a concert piece. Mm. was never done. It was him. And then when Napoleon took over France, he burned all of his writing, all of his music. Only a little bit of his music is left. Mm. Because Napoleon hated what happened to them with the, with the, with the um, Napoleon and all the rest of them hated what happened to, uh, to him in uh, Haiti. Mm -hmm. So when this black man who had this huge standing with statues of him mm -hmm. and all of his accomplishments, the first thing Napoleon did was to burn down and destroy his works. So you never heard about him. But you're going to hear about him when you get my book. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So so um, Mozart wasn't a brother? No, I believe that Mozart was a mix. Okay. He was um, they said he was a brother, but I don't believe he was a brother. Mm -hmm. I know there was a lot of brothers, a lot of mixing. The the, the first Germans were black. In mm -hmm. fact, Benjamin Franklin said that when they were all migrating into Philadelphia, he wanted to put a stop to the migration of the Germans because he said they would blacken the population. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Matter of fact, the German army at that time uh, was the horsemen. Matter of fact, that's who. Um, uh, Be uh, Beethoven, or the beekeeper, that's what he called him, Beethoven. Mm -hmm. Beethoven's mother was a Moor, uh, father was a Moor, I believe, and he was one of the German soldiers that had a tryst with, Be with Beethoven's mother. Mm. Wow. Mm -hmm. He was the brother. Wow. Some deep you history. About that. See, you don't, you don't know about that. See, that's, it, if I if these young uh, brothers and sisters who are out there, you know, following along a track, you know, hip hop has is one of the longest running uh, genres yeah. and has not changed. Mm. Our music shifts mm -hmm. as the consciousness shifts. Yeah. Our consciousness has gone downhill ever since because those who control us are the ones who are sitting in other countries starting with I, and the ones who are there making sure that the music that they shoved back into the church never comes back out into the public again. Because mm. when you want to hear some serious throwdown music, soul music, you got to go back into that institution that has enslaved this part of your mind. Mm -hmm. the music used to free your heart and your mind. Ain't no stopping us now. Mm -hmm. Where's that music? We don't have it. We're too busy being belligerent. We're too busy being uh, fighting. We become, we become warriors, yes, but against ourselves. Mm -hmm. We're fighting each other. You know what are we talking about? You know, I mean, again, <clears throat> it, it, it's 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 pathetic what I saw, and it, it really hurt my heart when I thought that that's the best we could do in music. Mm, no, mm. no, that's that's not the best we could do with music. Mm. Wow. Mm. No, definitely. I'm 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 glad you touched on that. Um, there was a question earlier, actually. I want to bring back around and ask you. Somebody wanted to know in terms of um, we was talking about 
the soul. And somebody asks, are birthmarks signs of your past life or something? Uh, that's funny. It's yeah, interesting. Totally. Now, most people don't know this. <laughs> I'm telling you. But mm -hmm. right on my hip right here, mm -hmm. I showed it to my wife. I have a distinct, distinct birthmark of Africa. Mm. Wow. Even with Mauritania on the side. Whew. And that, and I couldn't believe it. And I, when I saw it, when they saw it, they said, what? I mean, it looks exactly like it. I wow. didn't know where it come from. I had no idea where that came from. I know mm. I was raised in a village that was pretty much African. And I was, um, it never really dawned on me as a birthmark until I grew and began to see what it was. And I'm saying, that, that looks, and then I reversed it. And it was, but the birthmark essentially is usually uh, could be a wound. Uh, it could be the consolidation of um, iron, uh, residual iron during the time of the birth cycle. Mm -hmm. And usually in the blood, the mother, when she has certain types of uh, feelings, goes through certain emotions or certain things, She's tagging the baby with that experience. And sometimes her experiences, emotional or otherwise, even with joy, comes out as a, quote, birth mark. Mm -hmm. Now, I want you to see this. Mm -hmm. See that? Mm -hmm. I want you to take a look at this from now on, on all of the people that you see as people who are dignitaries. And mm -hmm. I'm not blowing bubbles. Look at the movie stars, mm -hmm. look at the musicians, mm -hmm. look at the uh, people who are politicians, mm -hmm. and so forth. And I didn't know this until it was a reader that told me, look at you, he says, you see this you have there on the other, where do you get that mole? And I said, I don't know, I've always had it. It grew mm -hmm. actually after, I, you could see it, when I was young, it wasn't there. It started coming out and it became prominent. But look to people like uh, Robert De Niro. Look to people like uh, um, the brother who played the the brother from another planet. Look to all these uh, people who are doing certain things in the world, and you'll see they're tagged. Women too. Wow. Wow. You know, and everybody said, "Well, look at Valentine you're getting this." <laughs> no, it's just something I noticed. Mm -hmm. You look at people, I'm saying, what, what, what is that? Why is, and I used to say that to my mom, and my wife is saying, ah, there's that man, that mole again. Mm -hmm. And he's either on the right or the left. Mm -hmm. Wow. L let me ask you this, uh, Doc. What do you think about, you know, since we're talking about souls, what do you think about the idea of uh, soulmates or twin flames? What, what, what exactly oh, yeah. is that? Yeah, that's real. That's so, so real. <laughs> it is. Uh, um, People who have an attraction for one another, they leave an indelible mark. And the scent, the sight, the touch, the sound, mm -hmm. the feeling, especially if it's sex as well, mm -hmm. you know if that person is your soulmate. And people say there ain't no such thing. Yes, there is. If there's someone who is for you and is searching for you and have found you, they can't be with anybody else. That's mm -hmm. like certain animals that mate for life mm -hmm. because they understand that they understand in their own consciousness, of course, birds, whatever it is, they mate for life because they understand that that's the one. And some people come back as animals. Some people, they say, come back as trees. And in some of the Hindu religion, you come back as a tree because you took so much from life. Now you want to give back to life. Mm. What does a tree do? A tree helps to keep the atmosphere breathable. Right. So some people are actually within trees themselves, which is why in certain cultures it was a sin to start chopping down trees. Wow. You see, because of what a tree really is. The tree is the is the is the is the um is, are the lungs of the earth. Mm -hmm. You see, you used to breathe carbon dioxide before because you had green skin and golden blood. That was mm -hmm. one of the transitional processes to where you now fell and where your body was, your blood was based in gold. Now it's 
it's lower and based in iron now, mm -hmm. which is one of the lower register um, elements on the planet, which is what true <clears throat> alchemy is. The changing of the lead into gold is the changing of the blood resonance consciousness in Solomon's song. You read Solomon's song in the Bible, that's all about the blood. Mm -hmm. And if you change your thinking process and you are able to reinvest or to re um, reinstigate or to replant or implant or resuscitate the magnesium molecule in your blood, then you'll find that you're able to even process carbon dioxide that you breathe out the way a plant would. Mm -hmm. I mean, no, and, and everything I'm saying, of course, is, you know, straight up occult. People think it's crazy because science, which you call science, ain't real science. That's to keep the people docile. Mm. Einstein's theory of relativity is bullshit. Mm. It's bullshit. It's meant to keep you thinking a certain way while those who understand the truth are advancing in leaps and bounds because they're keeping the cattle thinking along a certain paradigmal structure of thinking. So, so you don't mess with the E equals MC squared at all? No, you know? no. I, I'm dealing with G-I-J comma J equals zero. Which That's is... The g -g -gat. Yeah, gagut. Gagut, yeah. Why? Because it made sense, especially in the meta with a metaphysical mind. Uh -huh. You have to understand that everything comes back to zero. And this is what it is that Einstein was searching for for 30 years. Dr. Oyibo gave it to him mathematically. Mm -hmm. But I don't deal with mathematics when it comes to reality because mathematics, if you look at the mathematics board when they're trying to tell you what reality is, mm -hmm. it's a bunch of bullshit. All these mm -hmm. little figures to tell you this. All you got to do is what? Be still and know I am. <laughs> Yo, Doc, what's up with Dr. Knight, y'all? Doc got some fire to him. To <laughs> Yo, Doc got some fire. Man, what happened? Hold on, let me take a break because we got 3,000. Doc, yo, Doc got some fire. <laughs> let me share this flyer real quick, Doc. Hold on, man. Right. I don't know what got into you. You got some fire with you tonight, man. I'm just, I'm just, I think it was the BET Awards that got uh, me. Yeah, I think it, it, it made you that mad. It made you that mad. Um, family, we are, Doc is having a rebroadcast of his um, webinar that he recently had. It's called Metaphysical Awakening of the Melanated Mind. And that will, the rebroadcast will be on July 17th at 3 p.m. Eastern time. I just shared the link in the uh, in the chat where you could go to that link to the, address, to, the, to, to the web address to sign up. But um, as you've seen earlier, there's certain things that Doc can't really touch on on the, on the YouTube platform that he touches on in depth on, at his webinars. So, uh, family, if you want to, and I advise you to sign up for this, if you didn't sign up for the first one, because Doc goes in for about six, seven, eight, nine, ten hours. All right, family? So make sure you will sign up to that webinar and show support to the brother, uh, Dr. Valentine. Any, anything you want to add on to that, Doc, before we continue? Well, what I wanted to tell everyone, please remember that <clears throat> we, we are not the ones that are actually making the links for you to enter. Please make sure that you look into all the caches of your email because it's going to be sent to the email that you give to them when you sign up and you make your payment. All right. And if there are any any problems, you know, please let us know. But we sometimes you, I can't tell you while I'm on the air. I can't fix it. Sometimes we do have some people our, our um, the people who we have that are working in our admin. They have, you know, they, they tried to stay on board to make sure that everyone is in and is satisfied. But a lot of people don't know how to even use the, the Internet properly. They don't understand how to use the Internet. And please, if you're in, please, please be sure that you do not raise your hand. I am not going to speak to you. Please stop raising your hand. We don't know how to, to shut it down. But when you raise your hand, you shut off a lot of what it is I need to read to you all. Mm -hmm. I understand that you all are passionate and you want to get into it. Um, maybe one day, Brother Rich and I would sponsor a question and answer from the uh, from the people so we could do just a, an online chat to answer certain questions. But as it stands, I have to put this information down. 
as, as succinctly as possible, and I can't be interrupted to answer questions. That other thing too, beloved, I wanted to talk about the Novatech. And for those of you, uh, listen, Novatech is put together by black folks. Okay, this is a platform by black folks. And you'll see it too, it's going to be connected to something called FTX. Okay, FTX. Everybody knows about me talking about XRP, XLM, XDC, uh, Quant, and the rest of these. That's what I have. I mean, this is no no advice, no legal advice, no uh, commercial or whatever advice. It's just I'm telling you what I'm doing. But for you to make, say, for instance, you want to make 3 to 5% every week, which is what I did. And I can tell you I did. I put in some monies, and every week I can convert that 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 monies, and then roll it back over again for the next week. You tell me what bank account you have right now that gives you three to five percent interest above every week, and especially since the dollar is getting ready to crash. You got to look into Novatech, and I can give you the brother's number. Just tell him that I sent you. His name is Reggie, Reggie Juze. Just Reggie is good. His number is 415, listen carefully, 756-5676. Once again, 415-756-5676. You got to remember now, there's going to be a whole lot of big name people, even people in the, in the rap community all the older old heads in the so-called rap community, hip hop community are getting on board now. <clears throat> and if you can get a group of people together to get into Novatech family, Reggie will drive to your state to sign you up. Mm. And he will there, he'll give you a, a, a lesson in what these black folks are doing. This black woman used to work on Wall Street. In fact, she got $10 million from some uh some superstar actor who saw what she was doing gave her the 10 million to get to get the platform going and now she's kicking ass and taking names wow so if you want to appreciate cuz remember i told you that the dollar is going to tank it's got to tank why because the old system has been hoarding money trillions of dollars to keep this swift system going but the new XRP system, the new uh, 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 cryptocurrency system, is freeing up that liquidity so that all the money that all of the banks were holding on to that belong to other countries are all going to come back to them. And that's when all of your tokens rise. And that's when all of your monies are going to rise. I say get into gold and silver. These are the two that are going to be appreciating. Gold is going to hit 5,000 something down, down the road. Uh, Bitcoin is going to hit a peak coming up. Probably go to uh, 45, 55, 100,000, and then all of a sudden crash. Mm. Why? Because it was created by the CIA. That's who created it. It's created. It, nobody knows who created it. They say somebody named Satoshi Nakamura. It's Satoshi, yeah. Nah, nah, that's bull. Because the name Satoshi Nakamoto actually uh, breaks down into <laughs> central intelligence. You saw my last webinar, I think I did two years ago. And I remember when my beloved brother here, Rich, told Bitcoin. Remember? Mm -hmm. When we were at the... Uh, at the um the vac the the thing, yeah, yeah, and you said, well, tell us about Bitcoin. And I said, don't go with Bitcoin. I said because it was created by the Five Eyes, and if if the banks don't trust anything having to do with the monetary system that they don't know the origins of, Wall Street does. That's why they're pushing it. That's why only the big players are the ones pushing Bitcoin. But they're going to push it, push it, push it until it crashes. And then XRP, XLM, XDC, and all of these coins that have value, the Internet of Value, all of them, 
that can, can, can give liquidity to your asset and, and cross-border payments. <clears throat> That's what's going to be the future. You young people, start feathering your nest now. Get into XRP, XLM, XDC, Quant, HBAR. These are the ones that have value for tomorrow. Don't worry about the, 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 uh, the, the, uh, the SEC. That's Wall Street trying to suppress the price. That's going to be over soon. All right? And I'm, I know I'm telling you a lot of things, but, but like I said, get in contact with Brother Reggie at 415-756-5676. Say you're interested in Novatech, and he'll give you a breakdown of what it is. He's a real excitable brother. He's, he's, he's on a mission, and I support him after I've done my due diligence with him, and I'm seeing the benefits and the profits as a result. All right, family. Um, we got about 20 minutes left. I'm going to take some Q&A from the people. Uh, once again, family, I just shared the link for the webinar Doc is having on July 17th. Shout out to uh, King Simon. I seen King Simon in the chat a little earlier. I don't know if the brother's still there. Uh, we got about 3,200 people in the chat room right now. Uh, let me get to this question. I was going to ask a question, but then just popped out. Uh, Mr. Valentine, can you explain soul traveling? <laughs> What's that, brother? Soul traveling. Well, you're talking about um, leaving your body, out-of-body experiences, um, having your consciousness which is actually a residual imprint of your of your of your spark on the soul. The soul sits on the heart in the heart. So if you're talking about soul traveling, uh, you're talking about your heart essentially holding on to something that it's Doc is frozen right now. No, yeah, they're, they're trying to shut me down. Yeah. Um, since the soul sits in a, an area called a sinoauricular node. In the heart. In the heart. Yeah. Uh, if you were talking about soul traveling, you're talking about the soul essentially um, actually searching for something that you have not yet been given a satisfactory answer for. Mm -hmm. Usually when you find yourself dreaming, for example, they call it dreaming or dream walking. Mm -hmm. They're calling it dream walking nowadays. Mm -hmm. um, when you when you find yourself in places that are vivid, these are you and, and you're saying, "Well, this thing looks familiar." Or I find myself in this place, and I've never seen it on TV. I don't know what this place is. Well, you are actually going back into the mitochondrial library of your experiences, and your soul is searching through that archive for something that you had as an intention. And everything is intention. Mm -hmm. Even your soul traveling, it's an intention. It's a, it's a need. It's a requirement or something that is that is a passion or some kind of appetite that you have not yet fulfilled. Anything that causes you to travel outside of your body means that your body hasn't gotten you there fast enough. So it has to it has to leave the body to see if it can get to the place where you feel you need to be but feel that you're not. Mm. Hmm. Let's get to the next question. Can Doc talk about the Polaris star and the Northern Lights, aka the Soul Stream? Well, the Polaris—that's a good one. The Polaris is the center of the chandelier. Hmm. What am I mean? Yes. The dome spins, and you can see that. It, it, it happens at such a slow speed that you don't see it happening. But the spinning of the dome is almost, uh, it's, it's essentially we live in what is known as a, um, a gigantic cyclotron. And the sun and the moon are the active parts of the magnetic and electrical energies that maintain the atmosphere that we're in. Remember, we're in a closed atmosphere. Polaris is the center point where the revolution of 
the energies that we have, the energy signatures that we have that keeps us alive, that keeps our keeps the the terrarium that we live in active. It keeps the energy flowing. Remember, everything is movement. Everything that we're dealing with has to do with a flow. You stop it, everything becomes stagnant. That means death. What happens to, to uh, just to give you a for instance, what happens to a flowing stream that gets bottled up and can no longer flow? What happens to that water? Oh, well, I keep, it's like me teaching my class. What happens is it stagnates and then becomes a swamp and then becomes fetid. And that water and everything around it dies. Well, Polaris is the center star. In fact, okay, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Honey, I'm, I'm on the air, sweetheart. Yeah, I'll call you right back, baby. I was wifey. What was I saying? Yeah, Polaris essentially is, if you look at the if you look at the um, the British flag, they call it the Union Jack. Well, that Union Jack is essentially the symbol of Polaris, because they say that that the Great Britain is the zero point on the latitude and longitude. So Polaris is supposed to be the North Star, but it's the center <clears throat> point that doesn't move. And everything centers around it, which shows that we are in an enclosure. Mm. We are not swimming or, or, or hurtling through space at 65,000 miles an hour while the clouds are standing still. It's ridiculous. So if you're dealing with the northern lights and the soul stream, uh, what you're looking at when you see the stream, what you're not looking at the stream, if you've ever watched the stream flow, you could see thousands of different ways and shapes that the water takes as it bounces over rocks or it takes on different, sometimes it pools and goes into a whirlpool and then keeps going. Well, as everything, as the, as the dome rotates, what you're looking at is uh, the, the hieroglyphics that was set in place that beamed down certain configurations that matched your brain. If you look up at the skies, you'll see that it matches succinctly the electrical patterns in your brain. The star mm. clusters and the star configurations match the way your neurons work. Mm. So what you got is a synergy, a synergism. And of course, your soul is interacting with that because the brain, the brain essentially is controlled by the heart. And the heart itself, there's a heart, there's a brain in the stomach, a brain here in the heart, and a brain up here. This one is the spiritual brain. This one is the material brain. And this one is the one controlling both of them, where you, in the upper room, Christ, are having the last supper or the, the last meal with all 12 of your apostles. Who do you think the 12 apostles were? The 12 signs of the zodiac. He was the 13th, or Ephesus which they took out of all of the, uh, the, the procession of the, uh, the Zodiac. There was a 13th sign, and it was the sign of the, of the alchemist. They took that away in between uh, Sagittarius and, and uh, I believe it was in between, it was between Sagittarius and I think it was Capricorn, or it was between um, Scorpio and Sagittarius. You'll find out. But they took Ephesus away from out of there because of what it represented. And if you focused on that part, you would see that that had a lot to do with the 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 um, the evolution of the soul at that point, because that's what alchemy was. Alchemy was changing from the body consciousness into soul and spirit consciousness. Mm -hmm. So if you're dealing with the so-called northern lights, the northern lights are essentially nothing more then the north part of here, if you talk about this part here, right here, this front part is north, okay? This south part here, which is the passion, north is the place where your frontal lobe is. The frontal lobe is where reason takes place. That's why you see the Moors talk about coming out of the what? North gate. Mm. 
Jeez. The south here, which is essentially the serpent brain, <clears throat> that's the passion brain. So this is north, this is south, mm. this is east, this is west. I, I can't explain it any further than that until I have to give you prerequisites to what I'm talking about. But that's a capsulation of it. Indeed. Um, Dr. Valentine, when you die, some people say to follow the light and others say to stay in the darkness. What do you think? Interesting, because it depends on what and who it is that is telling you that. Follow the light to where? You are the light. Who are you following? A lot of people were saying, I don't know if you have ever seen me talk about a book um, that was written by Val Valerian. Um, it was, I forgot what it's called. Remember? The, the Matrix books? Not, Matrix, not the, right. Yeah, the Matrix yeah, books. Yeah. Remember what you're saying, that, that there are entities that have set up technologies that when you pass on, they have the way of trapping that energy that is left and trapping it to the point where it puts it, if you don't know what you, you don't take the consciousness of awareness with you at your death, then that soul is trapped and placed back into the body they want, which is normally mm. a body that is actually going to grow into a drone. So you have to be very mindful. You have to become seriously conscious of what you are first and who you've become and are ready to jettison the fear of death. That's what we teach at our university, to take on the shaman's mentality of life because life to them, all of it was a preparation for the moment of your death. Mm. Because at the moment of your death, if you do not leave your body consciously and with joy, because they say, my whole life flashes ahead of me or before me. Mm -hmm. That's the time when you are going through an assessment. That's your judgment day. Mm -hmm. That's the point where you're being judged. You're not being judged by some God in heaven and you're going to sit there with Peter's book and all this bullshit. Mm -hmm. You are now setting up when you're looking back in your life, what have you done? What are you sorry for? What are you happy about? All these things are going to flash back because they're memories in the subconscious. As you're leaving the body, the subconscious is leaving with it. Mm. So the subconscious starts shooting all kinds of information to the conscious mind. And so you say, well, my whole life is passing before me. Yeah. What have you placed into that cachet? What have you placed into the vault of your subconscious? That when that time comes and it's opened, what are you fearful of? What are you ashamed of? Have you left anything that would be a legacy to make someone else greater than you? Remember what I always taught? That if a teacher isn't teaching the student to be greater than he or she, then that's a pimp. Mm. And that's, that's what we here at the university believe. That's what I want to do. I want to make everyone that I touch greater than me because you're the future. Mm -hmm. Suppose I want to come back through one of you all and mm. you're dumb as fucks. <laughs> what I'm going to do? Who going to teach me what who I am or what I am? <laughs> I want to come back to, 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 to youth who are brilliant in spirit as well as technology. And if I'm going to come back and be raised by a mother and father like that, then I'm going to just hit the ground running. Otherwise, I'm going to take the mindset that I have and become the best criminal there is. Mm. It depends. How are you mm. leaving? What have, what have you left? How you're leaving and what you've left. Doc is giving some deep answers to your questions, family. I hope y'all appreciate what this man is doing. One way to show your appreciation is to sign up for his webinar, as well as if you even want to go even deeper, sign up for the Brothers University. I think that's for when you serious, serious. You know what I'm saying, family? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, thanks for tuning in. We're going to take about two more. You got two more questions you could take, Doc? Yeah, sure. 
Let's take two more questions and then we're going to get out of here, family. But I definitely, we got about 3,300 people in the chat. Definitely appreciate everybody for joining us tonight. Let's get to this question. Can getting beat as a child suppress your soul? Oh, yeah. Well, what did you do to bring that particular karma to you? Everybody feels that, of course, the child is being, and of course, you have to come to the rescue of that child because then you're trying to save that child. But who are these creatures? Who are the entities that are coming back, that are being punished so, that are being tortured so? What is that contract that you create, that you draw that to you? There are no accidents. Mm. Most people think that, hey, no, this is horrible thinking. Well, the thinking and the act of participation are linked, even though you're a child. Remember, a child is not a child. It's only a physical child. That's an old soul coming back to go through the crucible once again. Now, does that sound heartless? Yes, it does sound heartless. But beating on a child like that, unless you are doing it with righteous intention and you get the parent that actually is, 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 is curbing what it is that became an appetite that destroyed you in a previous life, you chose your own karma to bring you back into balance. Is this what you did to someone else? But you come back as a child now, and of course, being a child, you know, it's, oh my God, how you, can, how you can talk like that, Dr. Valentine? That's a child. Yeah, it's a child today in this life. Mm -hmm. But what was it before? I don't mean it to, to, to impersonalize it. Who was he or she before? And so, no, it's not good to be the child. I did. I got my ass whipped if I did something wrong and kept doing it. The belt didn't get to come down until you did it two or three times. Mm. But I remember my grandfather was a brute. He came up as a brute. My grandfather, my grandmother, my mother told me about his stories about him being tied to the bed. All of this kind of stuff. And when I saw what was going on with me and my father, my father was military, straight up military killer, a lot of bodies, mentally, learned a lot from him, got burnt by him. And then when I came to that particular resolve, I said, I ain't never going to do that to mine. Why? Because I was the one that was going to stop it right here. And mm -hmm. I did. Mm -hmm. And every time I would have any kind of chastisement, you can ask my son. I wouldn't beat on them. What I would do is talk to them right in their face. And then what would happen is, since his the, the, the limbic system and the frontal lobe is where you have your highest thoughts, I used to take my knuckles and this be his head, and I would go, is anybody in there? Mm. And that would drive him crazy. He hated that. But he got it. Mm -hmm. He got it because every time he do something stupid two times, three times, that's when I would knock at that part of his highest mind. Where is anybody in there? Are you occupying this part of your brain? Hmm. So, no, I don't I don't condone beating on a child, but I have to look at it impassionately like an intelligence. The intelligences are there to dispassionately look at the, the movements of life. And just make sure that whatever you're doing is in balance. If it's not in balance, the intelligences move in and force you back into balance. And that sometimes is what comes out as the brutality or as the accident that takes lives or cripples and so forth. Mm -hmm. There is no accident, actually. Uh, let's get to this question, Doc. This is going to be the last question for tonight, family. Can Doc explain the star Beetle Geese's Dimmon? and its relevance in Egyptian cosmology. Betelgeus is supposed to be this incredibly bright um, star that's supposed to be coming into our, into our um, reality. This is what I've learned of it. Um, the dimming is temporary. There's going to be a burst of light coming out of that region of the dome that is going to light up the sky so that there's no more night. This was what was prophesied. Mm. And as far as its, its, its relevance in cometic eschatology, um, that star itself was essentially Bethlehem. 
supposedly, the house of bread. It was supposed to be the coming uh, that tells of a new paradigm, a structure of paradigm, but it was supposed to light up the sky to the point where it was supposed to be some kind of explosion, but it wasn't an explosion. And as far as Bethel Guess is concerned, it, it, it also is supposed to be a representation of Lucifer. Hmm. Wow. You know, Doc, I had a dream <coughs> about <coughs> a year and a half ago. Maybe you can help me make sense of it before we get out of here. I was doing a show. I had a show with um, Billy Carson, and we was talking about remote viewing. And um, I remember I went to bed that night, and I dreamed that I went to I went somewhere, and everybody was just staring at the sky, and it was like the stars. Everything was so close, like how the sky is far from us. Everything was like like these are the people and this is the sky right here was like real close to them. And I asked where I was. They told me I was in Andromeda. And I remember looking back at earth and I was asking, I seen something happening and I was like, what's going on? And they said, Oh, they're turning the souls into iron. I remember them saying they, they, that, that's where they turn the souls into iron. And um, you mentioned iron earlier. That what made me think about that dream I had. Is anything I just said make any sense or that maybe you could expound on it for me, doc? Well, it's interesting that you said that uh, that the sky was this close. Yeah, that's your brain. The part of your brain, if you could remember the configuration of the sky mm -hmm. at the time that that happened, you can see what part of your brain was trying to give you information. Mm. Because the sky above, all of the stars you see, the billions and trillions of stars you see, are actually what are part of your brain. Mm -hmm. And and what you would see in the form of stars, or what would most like, if you would see it in almost in a hologramic or holographic, almost three hundred and sixty degree surrounding thing, where it's almost sitting on top of you, mm -hmm. that's you now reaching into the roof of the brain, which is where we call the the, the colostrum, which is where Santa Claus comes down the chimney mm -hmm. and, and and bathes the brain, gives gifts to the brain. Mm -hmm. Well, you essentially could have been essentially interfacing with a thought process that matched with sky configurations that you remember seeing. And now that linked in with the way that the, the, the mapping, the cerebral mapping of the brain matches what you saw in the sky. Sorry, and yeah. that then became something that kind of lowered to you. You should find out what that particular thought pattern really represented, because each thought pattern has a particular electro electrochemical signature. Mm. Each thought has an electrochemical signature, and if you could remember what that thought you said, iron. Yeah, they, they, when I asked them what's going on in Earth, they said that's where they turn the souls into iron. They well, turn that means iron. then you were probably getting that mix that information about the fall of man. If you're dealing with the fall of man. Essentially, the fall of man is that we lost the green skin. What happens in the fall? The, the leaves turn from green to brown. There you go. Mm. Melanin is not just black. It's not just brown. Melanin is green, too. And melanin, there's in my book, I, read, I write about something I call prismatic melanin. Prismatic melanin is what we see on brothers and sisters like the deepest and the darkest. I'm talking about charcoal, black, beautiful skin like the Senegalese. And if you were to look at them in the earliest days, you'll see that they were black. And remember, these the blackest of people didn't come from the sun, people. They were living in the canopies of a, a, um, a um, uh, what do you call it, the... Uh, uh, Forests, the rainforests. Mm -hmm. They lived in the canopy under the tree, and they were black. Now, if you ever seen, have you ever seen the skin of the the, the Senegalese? And when he sweats, that you could actually see colors on his forehead. Yeah, like red, yeah. green, blue. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's prismatic melanin. I think. Mm, prismatic melanin. Wow. Okay. Right, and it's prismatic because essentially we felt our, our feelings were shown through that because the colors of the chakra would tell you where you were actually centering your thought process. Mm -hmm. It would show on you. You didn't have to communicate. Remember, this is the, this is the, 
This is the youngest form of communication that humanity has ever had. All these words? Yeah. We get confused. We used to project pictures to each other's minds. Mm. We used to have certain colors that we changed to give you our feelings that went with that telepathic communication. <laughs> oh, I know it sounds like fantasy. Nah, man, no, nah, man, this is some, <laughs> this is DNA awakening information right here, man. We all feel this in our soul right now here in this conversation. Praise, wow, praise man, it, this dude, this dude, this dude here is no joke, family. I've been telling y'all that for a long time. This dude here is no joke. I'm going to share this link once again, family. Uh, we about to close out. Let me share this link once again. July 17th is going down the metaphysical awakening of the melanated mind. Let me show y'all this flyer one more time. The brother's doing a rebroadcast of his most recent webinar. I advise y'all to get down uh, and check this out, man, and wake up. That's what it's all about. It's all about waking up. Doc, before we get out of here, once again, thank you. Uh, leave them with any information you want to leave them with before we get out of here, Doc. I really appreciate you, brother. Once again, thank you so much for the opportunity Indeed. to talk to the family. And from my wife, um, she sends her love. She wanted to call and find out how everything went. She thought we'd be off by then. But I am uh, um, very happy about that. Our 800 number, of course, for any of our services, uh, exemption or whatever it is that we're dealing with. I don't want to, you know, mess up with that again. Mm -hmm. um, uh, just when you, when you want to deal with that, you call and we'll give you more information about not getting it, uh, that thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you want to deal with our university, you can call the 800 number, 800-847-1291, 800-847-1291. If you want to get on our, um, <clears throat> on our mailing list, you can go up to our university's website, www.uksnow.org. UKS, U is United, K is in King, S is in Science, N-O-W.org. And just click where it says contact and then fill out and then you become part of our uh, mailing list. Uh, and then here's the other thing I really want to stress now because it's going to get really bad economically, and we have to do something about that. I was told my wife wanted to tell me to tell you this, Brother Reg, and a lot of the Brother Moores, they always wanted, to, wanted me to tell everybody, please understand that uh, get in contact with Reggie about Novatech, and that's 415-756-5676. Again, 415-756-5676. 5676 to talk about Novatech with Brother Reggie. All right, just tell him that I referred you and you heard about it on our beloved Brother Rich's program. And I'm hoping to see everybody there uh, on Sunday, the 17th. And uh, we're going to throw down and get your pads and pen. Hmm. I don't mind you doing that. I don't even mind you taking audio recordings as long as they're for you privately taking down information for your own benefit and your family's benefit, but it's not for sale to anybody else. Please understand that. I'm protecting that for my children and my grandchildren. All right. So brother Rich, once again, I want to thank you as I thank all the other brothers and sisters who are doing the work Brother King Simon, A. a. Rashid, uh, Black Dot, all of you all. I'm, I'm so proud of you guys. You have no idea speak about you all all the time, all the work that you all are doing. I'm very happy to see that you all picked up the torch. Thank you very much. And thank you to the family for tuning in. Family, we out of here. Thank you. See you soon. Peace.